going to tell you a little bit about um, Life in My Shoes. I think a lot of it, hopefully, is has already been said here today, which is reassuring that we're, we're doing the right thing. Um, but who we are, we're basically, we're part of a charity called Body and Soul, which coincidentally also is linked to Anita Roddick um, as well, who set up the body shop. But what we do is um, we work with people in the UK who have HIV or who are affected by HIV. And Life in My Shoes is a campaign which is born out of listening to those stories um, about what it's like to live with HIV. And unfortunately, um, even though there's been a lot of advancement in medication um, and support in terms of managing living with HIV here in the UK, what we know that hasn't really changed um, to the same degree is attitudes and behaviour towards people with HIV. And Whilst we're dealing with HIV here, we know that this is kind of the same with lots of other issues that are discriminated against as well. So Life in My Shoes really came about from talking to young people at Body and Soul, um, young people living with an effect by HIV, and to kind of say, look, if you've got the opportunity to put a campaign and to speak to the general public, what, what is it that you want to say? Um, and they really said, ultimately, we want people to see us for who we really are. We want people to step into our shoes for the day, and see that life can be really can be really tough sometimes. It's really challenging, but equally, in the same breath, we're just like everybody else. We're teenagers. We're trying to get on with life. But what really doesn't help is people's negative attitudes and um, judgments against us. That's really what's holding us back. So, what we as an organisation decided to do was to try and create some kind of interactive campaign that's going to give young people, people at schools, you guys, people all over the world, the opportunity to, um, to have these discussions, which sometimes can be difficult, about why, why, we, why we hate, why we love, why do, why do we have these kind of attitudes. Um, and here's kind of how we are trying to do that. I mean, the reason, obviously, is we're coming from the perspective of HIV and discrimination, and we did a lot of um, research in schools to really kind of understand what are you being taught and, and um, what do you really know? And one of the kind of things that really drove us was that we know that even when people have the right facts and they have the right information um, about HIV, for example, 69% uh, of young people knew that you can't get HIV by kissing or by sharing a cup with someone else who's HIV positive. But then when we kind of went a little bit further and said, OK, well, if you know that you can't get HIV by holding hands or sharing a cup with someone would you hold hands or share a cup with someone who is HIV positive? And the number of people dropped to about 20%. So what was really interesting for us is that, like I said before, even when we know that you know the facts, the behaviour isn't really reflecting that. So that's really where we wanted to kind of try and make an impact and try and say, try and do something that's really going to connect um, with people in an emotional way so that we're actually changing our attitudes and behaviour, if that makes sense. Um, as it's been mentioned before, in the kind of the most extreme sense, we know that this discrimination, this negative behaviour, can have extreme effects and can lead to people dying, people committing suicide. You've seen and heard there's all sorts of cyberbullying um, going on in this day and age. And we know, in terms of HIV, one of the biggest challenges is... Um, having to hide the fact that you have HIV, which can lead to not taking medication, which can lead to having um, bad, bad health, which in turn can lead to death as well. So it's a serious discrimination and, and negative attitudes can lead to something very serious. But in the same breath, we believe that empathy can save lives. And that's really why, I guess why we're all here today as well, but really why we're kind of pushing forward with the campaign. Um, what we try to do is try to create opportunities kind of in simple steps for people to get involved with the campaign and be able to um, enjoy and experience each other's lives. Um, so we do that by engaging people in ways that they understand. Um, we encourage people to step into the shoes of each other, to have conversations, to listen, everything that's kind of been said here already today, and give people simple steps in which they can feel that they can change the world around them. Whether it's because of a difference in skin colour or our religion, whether it's because we have a mental condition or because we are HIV positive or because we are gay or because we were raped or just because we wear a hoodie, stigma has deeply damaging effects.
Studies show stigmatized groups often end up in poorer housing, lower paid jobs, and have poor physical and mental health. But the most damaging symptoms of stigma are isolation, depression, and in the worst cases, suicide. Stigma kills, and by changing attitudes, we can save lives. At Life In My Shoes, we're all about helping people feel more value. We give people the rare chance to step into the shoes of some of the most marginalized people in society, where a powerful transformation takes place. You feel more empathy, you become more mindful. The people who are stigmatized feel valued and all our lives become more enriched. 100,000 adolescents commit suicide every single year. Many of them could be avoided if the world just had more empathy. Empathy is one of the world's biggest natural resources. But in the modern world, it's becoming a rare commodity. In 2011, we launched Life In My Shoes, a brave campaign that taps into this resource to create a world without stigma. Do you think you could be a film star? We started out by bringing together stars from the acclaimed TV shows, The Inbetweeners and Misfits, for a nationwide star search to find the lead for our film, Undefeated. See you there. Thousands of young people from across the nation went online and uploaded their auditions. We had over 300,000 views of our campaign films without any media spend. Now here's the clever bit. The audition script was about the pain someone feels when they are stigmatized. By learning the script, young people stepped into the shoes of someone who is hated, internalizing their pain. They got to understand stigma firsthand. I have attempted to commit suicide. I really just locked it up inside and understood it as if things were my fault and there's nothing I can do and everything I touch is going to turn to poison, so you might as well just stay away from everyone or do everyone a favour and just kill yourself. From the thousands of entries, a girl who had no previous acting experience shone through and was chosen to be the lead in Undefeated. Pearl Mahaga featured in The Observer magazine, and she was on her way to stardom. Bafta award-winning executive producer Fanola Dwyer, exciting new film director Tudor Payne, and young people from across the country came together to craft a powerful film depicting the life of a girl struggling against stigma. Come on, then. What, you want me to tell everyone here, yeah? Your little secret. Just smack her! Shut up, Candy! Uh, don't you. touch me! Now let's all You're calm disgusting. down. disgusting! Please, girls. Keep walking, Filming began in Hackney at the same time as the London riots kicked off. While cars and buildings burned all around, young people came together to work on this positive project. After two intensive weeks, the film emerged, undefeated. The film had its premiere at Cannes Film Festival and has gone on to screen all around the world. Now the centre of an education resource for schools, Undefeated is like everything we do at Life In My Shoes. In a noisy world, Life In My Shoes stands out and gets noticed. We get lots of media coverage, including ITV News, Evening Standard, The Metro and Vogue. We even got a four-page article and the front cover of The Observer magazine. Through press, TV, print, online and social media, we reached more than 18 million people. Life in My Shoes represents for people dealing with life's biggest challenges. So lots of the world's leading stars like to get involved and help. Renowned photographer Rankin and top design agency Pentagram came on board to create an interactive exhibition that is now touring the world. And if one little kiddie runs along and looks in there and says, Mummy, Mummy, what's all this about? It's great. Our latest campaign is a search for a music star. Emily Sande, Tiny Temper, Jessie J, Rudimental and Labyrinth will give young people the chance to make a song and have it produced 
by one of the UK's leading music producers. Yo, yo, it's Jessie J here. Do you want to be a music star? Whether it's musicians, designers, academics or activists, our projects are great because we work with great people. Our goal is to end stigma and increase empathy, to create a world where people feel more valued. Empathy is in our nature. It just needs a little nurture. I know we're running out of time, but we just wanted, Sandra just wanted to tell you very quickly before we go into the round table her kind of um, experience with the campaign. Um, my experience with the campaign, um, I started it, I didn't know much about it, but um, it looked really cool. But um, for me, it really like made me question what it means for me to be empathetic. And because um, of like his related to HIV and stuff, um, I don't think, I mean, wrong in saying that like, people do say things like, oh, like, oh, you're nasty, you get HIV, or something, something close to those lines, or like things like, oh, that's so gay, like it's in, in the negative connotation, like you don't, you don't mean to be like, homo you're probably not a homophobic person, you don't hold nothing against like a one group, but it made me like question like, what am I adding to when I say things like that, even though like, I don't mean like great harm to anyone, um, and it just, yeah, it kind of just made me, um, really have to look into myself because obviously I don't think I'm a bad person um, but it really had to yeah made me question what I do and how that impacts like a much bigger picture and um, yeah yeah and what it really means to be empathetic and like being on this um, being on this project it meant it it made me have to look at being empathetic much more than, oh, I'm just a nice person, or like, and it's easier to be like, oh, like when I see someone that's like blind, I, I could walk them across and whatnot. It's obviously it's easier to do those more visible things, but like, what happens to like the invisible, um, like things that we that we should be like empathetic towards? Like, obviously, you can't tell someone has HIV, but like, say you're all sitting around and someone makes a joke about it, you laughing adds to that like negativity or like you laughing at someone making a gay, a gay joke adds to that or even just sitting there saying nothing adds to it um so yeah it made me question yeah what 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 uh, what my values are and the people that are around around me what their values are and like what am I like adding to or taking away and um I think I'll stop talking because we're overrun <laughs> but uh, we're gonna be around if you guys have questions and stuff